this motorcycle. Okay. I would have caught more than seven. I love it. Suits. Were yeah. we just talking about this backstage? It didn't jo uh, Def Rat guy get called by? Uh, I did. What De the hell Def is that? And, and I got called apparently. three times. Def Rat, we're, we're talking about this backstage before oh, the live show. Uh, so that looked like a motard, a bobbed motard. Like it had no, it had no rear seat, but it was like a leather seat. And it had like a, a spindle, spindly little tires, like you'd get on a, a double springed, uh, a double spring cruiser, dude. I think that's what they call that, where the front end is is the double spring fork, um, or Springer fork, whatever. I don't know. Anyway, that was cool looking. Holy crap! So good morning, allies. Oh, look at this backlight. Oh, sorry. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. Ah, much better. Good morning, allies. How is everybody today? I'm tired. I stayed up way too late. I got on a Gun Channel's chat. We had a good, man, lots of good discussions last night. Lots of good discussions. I always love getting on those gun chats because I end up staying up way too late is my only, my only, <laughs> my only downside because I don't want to get off. I want to, I, want, I don't want to get off. I don't want to get off of the chat. I want to talk to everybody for a while because I enjoy, I enjoy all these people. They're really cool people and I like talking to them. So if you're not already, I recommend checking out gunchannels.com. Uh, go to their their live stream, the live lobby, and you can you can check out their shows. They do, you know, um, Matt's there, Never Enough Ammo, the Yankee Marshals there, obviously Gun Websites is there, and and many others. A cast, a a, a cavalcade of characters, if you will. <laughs> This house, one of the models for our remodel that we did. I don't think it's a good enough job. I don't think they did a good job with it, but it's a similar, similar idea. Hey, it's a little sharp kitty. There's a possum there, Ben. Stay in, no, 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 don't get out. Big ghosts and scary things. Maybe close on yet. So I think this is a Japanese bath bomb that contains a little car. Yeah. So this is a gift that somebody gave Ben. Okay, go ahead, put it in. Yep. Grow out of a, it's gonna grow out of a car. It's gonna, well, the car's inside the bath bomb. Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> okay. Watch it. It's growing. It's growing. Oh. Let <laughs> me. Are you chilling after our walk? Oh, you got it? Yeah. Let me see. Hold it up. What is it? It's a, it's a car. It's a little taxi car? Yeah. That's kind of weird. I didn't expect it to be so small. It's just a little plastic car, huh? Oh well. Oh, well done. Well done. What happened there? Okay. This seems a little premature that you're standing on your own right now. He's scared How me. old are you? You're like six months old and you're already standing on your own? He's one. No, he's not. He's like six months old. That is crazy. He got up on his own. I got this. I got these pumpkins. I got these. You're freaking me out, kid. I got this. Wow, guys. I'm tired. I stayed up a little too late last night. I think I mentioned that, though. Addison, what are you doing? So I've had this knife for... A couple weeks now, and I haven't talked to you about it. 
This is a Kirchhoff Shuffle, the first gen model. I really like this knife. This knife is a great backup knife. It's a great utility knife. It has a pry bar slash slotted screwdriver head and a usable functioning cap lifter, very functional. The lock is a liner lock. I'm not gonna lie, it's not a great lock. But for $15, this is a hard knife to beat. I don't know if you remember my video series I was doing on economy knives for like the everyman, everyman knives. I got this knife at Walmart for $15. This is probably one of the best knives you can get for $15 um, in the stores. That is a great knife. It came um, hair shaving sharp, which I've used it some, so it's not, yeah, it's still popping hairs. Um, it's not as sharp as it was. I need to touch it up a bit. I've been using it. Just great. And and let me let me do a quick comparison against the Shuffle 2, which I also owned. I actually bought the Shuffle 2 first and gave that to a buddy. Um, this is much better. I like the knife better, the blade. I don't like Tontos very much, so um, having a more traditional blade is advantageous to me. Also, the cap lifter on this is infinitely more usable than what's on the Shuffle 2. The Shuffle 2 has them on the sides, on the top and bottom of the scales, and you and you use it this way instead of just hooking on the cap and lifting it. One single, single motion. Don't know, I need to do a standalone video for this knife and give you a little bit more details, but the um, initial, my initial comments are this is a winner and I wish I was carrying this sooner. It's not gonna replace my normal EDC knife, the Waved Delica, but it has quickly become my my backup knife that I keep in my in my everyday messenger bag. What a cool knife. I think a lot of people have different reasons why they were upset about Casey Neistat's video. And I, I don't wanna belabor this. I just wanna make one point, because I think, I don't know that people are thinking that, I know people don't think the way I think, but, People are upset that he's using his platform as like manipulation or using his platform to shill for Hillary. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with people using their platform, their massive audiences, if they have them, to possibly sway people into voting or doing something that you want. What I have a problem with is when your arguments to get people to vote the way you want is fear-mongering and logical fallacy. That's why I mentioned that in the beginning of that video. He used fear-mongering, fear of Trump becoming elected and what Trump may potentially do to cause people to have an emotional reaction and, and, and think the way he thinks. Doing anything based off of an emotional reaction is usually, <laughs> if you do that, it's usually a pretty good idea that you're not in control of the situation and that you're possibly making very bad decisions with your life if you're using if you're letting emotions dictate your decision making so to manipulate people and it is a form of manipulation manipulate people through use of fear-mongering I feel is the problem not that he uses his power base or his, his influence but that it's done via manipulation of through fear-mongering so here's a question today. It's a little heady, and, and I want to know what you guys think. Um, have we entered a point of our society where we think that people have to agree with us, and if they don't agree with us, they're either evil or they're stupid, or they're not worthy of our time and our effort to be involved with them? You know, not worth being friends with somebody who doesn't agree with you politically. I heard uh, Adam Carolla say that we have entered that point where society, you know, most people just care whether you agree with them or not, and if that ever comes up and you don't agree with them, it's over, it's done. Or that you hate them, you think they're stupid, or they don't understand something. Like, we can't just accept people who disagree with us anymore. It's an interesting concept, I don't know that I believe it. I'm interested in what you think, though. So please, tell me your thoughts in the comments below, okay? Thanks a lot. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And I'd love it if you shared this on your socials. That would be amazing and awesome, and I would 
really appreciate it. Okay, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. See ya. So the celebration didn't happen today. It's happening tomorrow for the amazing thing that happened at work. At least I think so. So I'll be going to that. Should be a lot of fun. It's a very interesting beer. Um, it's like they give you a card and you use the card to pour beer. You do it on your own, self-serve beer. Very cool.